That's a Scottish style tapas bar. The Sikh Gurdwara is the largest place of worship in Scotland. Um, a stunning building. Um, and we have a number of good Indian restaurants around about here. I can recommend Mother yeah. India. So this is us here, stop number 17. Thanks for joining us, folks. So if there's anyone downstairs that wants to come and join us upstairs, we do have plenty seats outside now, folks. Plenty seats outside. So other good Indian restaurants, I've not tried these ones, but Horn, please, I believe that is a, an, an Indian style tapas bar. Uh, Bukhara is also uh, an Indian restaurant, I believe. Um, we have a large uh, population of Indian, Pakistani and Bangladeshi people here in Glasgow, so I really don't think you're going to find a bad curry anywhere here. Uh, on the left hand side we have the Royal Crescent and in one of these houses stayed Dr Edward William Pritchard, the last man publicly hanged in Scotland for poisoning his wife and his mother-in-law. Um, we also have on the right hand side the Golden Dome and the Pink Stone of the Sikh Gurdwara. You'll get a better look as we go through the traffic lights. Um, now that Pink Stone actually came all the way from India. They had talked about using Scottish Stone but I'm glad that they went for this one um, because it's so vibrant, it's really lovely. And it would have increased the cost of the building quite considerably. Um, as I say, townhouses to the right and shortly will be on either side of us. The wealthy who owned the buildings would go up the stairs into their front door, as would their guests, maybe a doctor, solicitor, priest or minister. But anyone else would go downstairs into the servants or um, um, tradesmen's entrance. Uh, that was where the workers stayed. Now my grandmother used to work in one of these buildings. She was a tweenie, that means she was an in-between uh, floors maid. Now she left home at the age of 14. Is there anyone here that's round about the age of 14? It's quite shocking to think that at 14 years of age she left her home. She worked from 6 in the morning till 11 at night working for complete strangers. Got one day off a week and only got to visit her family three times times a year. That happened all over the UK in the early 20th century. Now we're in Sucky Hall Street. We have been since uh, pretty much we left the uh, museum and art galleries. And our next stop is stop number 18 for this part of Sucky Hall Street uh, for the Royal Highland Fusiliers Museum on our left. And it is also the stop for the Tenement House. Now it's only open Fridays and weekends at the moment and you do need to book a ticket even if you're a member of Historic Scotland. To the left we have the Beresford building. That was originally a hotel and that's where John F. Kennedy gave his first public address. It did become um, Strathclyde University student accommodation. These days it's an apartment building. Now Sucky Hall Street gets its name from two Scots words, a sock and a haw. A sock is a willow tree, a haw is a water meadow. And our next stop is stop number 19, stop number 19 for the original willow tea rooms. That's Macintosh at the Willows, uh, Macintosh at the Willows, designed by Charles Rennie Macintosh. It's been lovingly restored to its former glory. It would also be the stop for the Glasgow School of Art, which is up to the left hand side. You can see it's being held up by scaffolding. Oh, you want to get off here, sorry. Can we stop at stop number 19, please? Sorry, Colin. Um, so at the rear of these buildings runs the Glasgow School of Art, but fire ripped through it and just pretty much destroyed the buildings in front. So the O2 ABC, this is us here, folks. O2 ABC is actually older than the Glasgow School of Art, folks. So this is us, stop number 19. Sorry, I didn't notice you there, folks. Thank you. Thank you. I only ever see when folk first get on at stop number one, give me a big wave and a shout. I'm actually partially sighted folks, so that's why I say a big wave. <laughs> so I do apologise. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. Um, so we have on our left hand side the original school of art. This is a uh, McClellan work, so the McClellan galleries. 
uh, on the left is Vernon Sandstone. In front of us, uh, the pedestrian precinct of uh, Sucky Hall Street, and the last cream building there on the right is Macintosh at the Willows. Also to the right we have the GFT, the Glasgow Film Theatre, which was originally the Cosmo. At the time that it opened in the 1920s, it showed for foreign language films and modern artsy films. It still does to this day. Our next stop box is stop number 20, stop number 20 for the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. So if you wish to get off, please give me a big wave and a shout and I will ask Colin to stop for you. So the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland, it was originally the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. And you guess because I like talking, that's the name I prefer. But by getting by conservatoire uh, status allowed them to uh, teach up to PhD level. That's our performing arts school. Um, so the stop number 20 is also for the Royal Theatre Royal and for the Piping Centre, which is a bagpipe school and museum. So the Royal Conservatoire on our left-hand side, notable graduates are Robbie Coltrane, who played Hagrid, um, David Tennant, who played Doctor Who, and if you like Outlander, I can tell you that Sam Hewen graduated from here too. On the left, the Theatre Royal in Cream and right at the end of the street, the Piping Centre. On our right hand side, we have the Pavilion Theatre, the last of our independent variety theatres. It's a lovely little theatre, but it is quite wee and tight. If you're tall, you won't like it. My son is six foot two and he said never again. Um, on the right hand side here, we have the tallest movie theatre in the world. It's not the biggest, it's only got um, 15 or 16 screens, but it is the tallest and it's in the Guinness Book of Records. In front of us, to the right hand side, we have the Royal Concert Hall. Now this was opened in 1990 for Glasgow being the European city of culture. It's a lovely place inside. I've been to quite a few uh, uh, concerts in there and if you're from Gla the Glasgow area and you've got kiddies and you want to get them into classical music, they quite often do children's concerts. My little granddaughter is going to be uh, five, well she is five this year, oh my goodness she is five. I'm not old enough to have a granddaughter of five. Um, but uh, I'm going to start taking her to those. Uh, I have to say her dad and, uh, and Auntie Katie, her uh, dad's sister, uh, they love classical music to this day, but because I'm a bit of a rock chick, chick a rock, they also like Iron Maiden and stuff like that too. Oopsie. Uh -huh. But you know what? It's all about experiencing different things. And Glasgow's all about that. There's so much to see and do here. Um, now, to my shame, when we were competing for the uh, City of Culture, I thought it was a joke. Because I was only a teenager and this is just my city. I didn't realise that we're different. I just took it for granted that all cities had lots of museums and libraries and theatres and universities, etc, etc. Um, and it wasn't until I started travelling about that I realised just what a cultured city Glasgow was. But it was one of Scotland's best kept secrets, so I'm really glad that we did become a post-industrial city. And now it's more than just Glaswegians that know that. So our next stop is stop number 21. Stop number 21 for the Buchanan Galleries. Yeah, can we stop at stop number 21, please? It's also for um, Buchanan Bus Station, which is on our left-hand side. 